Hi everyone. In this lecture, I will go over the structure and properties of cardiac muscles. There are three main types of muscles in our body, which are the skeletal, the smooth and the cardiac muscles. As you know, many cells together form a, a tissue and the tissues together form an organ. The same is true for muscles also. Many muscle cells together form the muscle tissue. In case of skeletal muscle, the muscle cells are arranged longitudinally and are cylindrical. In case of smooth muscles, there are spindle-shaped cells. And in case of cardiac muscle, the muscle cells are arranged in a branching pattern. Like if you see here, this here is one muscle cell, this here is another cardiac muscle cell, this is another cardiac muscle cell, and so on. And you can see that they are arranged in a nice branching pattern, connected in series and parallel to each other. And each muscle cell is also known as a muscle fiber. And in case of the cardiac muscle, each cell is known as the cardiac muscle cell or the cardiac muscle fiber. And if you see this picture, you can obviously see that there is a high branching pattern between multiple cells in the cardiac muscle so this here is one cell this here is one cell and this here is one cell and so on and many such cells join together in a branching pattern and you can also obviously see that each cell has a central nucleus the this thing in blue here this is a nucleus and you can see that every cell has a single nucleus in the center so from your basic sciences most of you would be knowing that each cell has a specific structure and something that is common to all the cells is that each of each cell has a specific shape, size, and uh, there is a membrane surrounding the cells, which is called as the cell membrane. And there are many organelles within the cell, such as the mitochondria, nucleus, and endoplasmic reticulum, and so on. And there is also a cytoplasm within the cell. Similarly, in the cardiac muscle cell, there also you have these structures and each cardiac muscle cell as you know is also known as a cardiac muscle fiber or cardiomyocyte where cardio means cardiac related to the heart myo means muscle site means cell and the cell membrane of the cardiac muscle cell is known as sarcolemma. And there are certain invaginations of the cell membrane into the cell called as the T-tubules. Like if you see in this picture here. So this is a single cardiac muscle cell. The membrane of the cell is known as the sarcolemma. And the membrane is invaginated into the cell in the shape of the letter T. And this invagination of the cell membrane into the cell is known as the T tubule. Endoplasmic reticulum of the cardiac muscle cell, mainly the smooth endoplasmic reticulum, is specialized to form the sarcoplasmic reticulum. And the mitochondria of the cardiac muscle cell, when compared to the skeletal and smooth muscle, are larger in size and more in number. This is a good adaptation because, as you know, mitochondria are the energy or powerhouse of the cell which helps generate energy in the form of ATP and this ATP is needed for the contraction of the muscle. And you know that the cardiac muscle cells 
have to function constantly as the heart is constantly pumping blood throughout the body. And so it is very beneficial that there is enough mitochondria which are larger and more in number helping to generate more ATP that helps produce enough energy for the constant pumping action of the heart. The cardiac muscle cells have a nucleus and in case of the cardiac muscle cell, the nucleus is single. There is one nucleus per cardiac muscle cell and it is centrally placed within the cell. And the cytoplasm of the cardiac muscle cell is also known as the sarcoplasm. And if you look closely in the picture here, you can see the structures known as myofibrils. So this here is one myofibril, this here is another myofibril, and there is another myofibril, and so on. And many myofibrils are arranged parallel to each other. And each cardiac muscle cell has many such myofibrils inside. So here in this picture, you can see the myofibrils arranged parallel to each other. Myofibrils are made of units known as sarcomeres. This here is one sarcomere. And these sarcomeres are made of proteins such as actin and myosin which are the two main proteins present in the sarcomere. There are also various other proteins which make up the structure of a sarcomere and these proteins help in the contraction of the cardiac muscle cell. And the two main proteins actin and myosin make up the myofilaments. The actin makes up the thin filament and myosin makes up the thick filament. These are the myofilaments. So myofibrils are made up of contractile units known as sarcomeres, which are the functional units of a muscle cell. These sarcomeres are made up of proteins, mainly the actin and myosin and this helps in the contraction of the muscle cell. So the cardiac muscle cells have contractile units within them known as the sarcomeres. The sarcomeres are the basic functional units of the cardiac muscle helping in the contraction of the muscle as they are made up of proteins such as actin, myosin, titan and other proteins which help in the contraction of the muscle. Thus, the sarcomeres form the basic functional units that help in the contraction of the cardiac muscle. And many such sarcomeres join to form a myofibril. There are many myofibrils within a muscle cell that lie parallel to each other. The first picture here shows the cardiac muscle with many myofibrils lying parallel to each other. And this picture here shows an enlarged view of one such myofibril with many sarcomeres inside it. And one sarcomere has been again enlarged here to show the arrangement of the proteins, mainly the myosin and the actin that makes up the thick and thin filaments. And you can see that the arrangement of the proteins in the sarcomere is in a way that it is parallel to each other. And this arrangement of the proteins in the sarcomere gives it a striated appearance. So uh, because of the arrangement of the sarcomere, the muscles, when they are viewed in electron microscope, they show this characteristic striated appearance. Stria means thin parallel lines that lie close to each other. Just like that, here you can see thin 
parallel lines of striae when you view a muscle in the uh, here in this case the cardiac muscle through electron microscopy and this appearance is called as the striated appearance now that we know what's inside the cardiac muscle cells let's learn what makes up the connections between these cells the cardiac muscle cells are connected to each other through structures known as the intercalator disc the term intercalator in latin means to insert between or among two layers so in this sense intercalator discs are present between two cells of the cardiac muscle and it helps connect the two cells together and these are basically cell membranes that help separate individual cardiac muscles from one another and form the connection between the two cardiac muscle cells and if you see this picture here you can clearly see one cardiac muscle cell here another here and another here and you can notice that there are dark areas separating each muscle cell from one another and this dark area has been enlarged here to show the intercalator disc so intercalator discs are basically structures that help separate two cardiac muscle cells from one another and this has been enlarged here showing the intercalator disc and the intercalator disc also help connect one cell to the other by means of the structures known as the gap junctions and desmosomes which form the intercellular junctions and you can notice here that the cardiac muscles are made of many individual muscle cells which are connected both in series and in parallel with one another the cardiac muscle cells are connected to one another by means of specialized junctions known as the intercellular junctions which form the connections between adjacent cardiac muscle cells inter means between cellular means between the cells intercellular means between the cells there are junctions known as the intercellular junctions or connections between the two cells in a cardiac muscle cell there are specialized regions of contact between the plasma membrane of adjacent cells known as the intercellular junctions the two main intercellular junctions in a cardiac muscle cell are the gap junctions and the desmosome the gap junctions help connect two adjacent cells of a cardiac muscle cell they form a means of connection or communication between the two adjacent cells helping in the spread of ions from one cell to the other thus helping in the spread of electrical activity from one cardiac muscle cell to the other in a rapid manner and there are also connections known as desmosomes which are basically an adherence form of connection which helps adhere one cell to the other via the intercalator disc helping in the structural integrity of the cardiac muscle cells so as you know in between adjacent cells there are specialized junctions known as the gap junctions 
the role of these gap junctions is to help in the rapid movement of ions from one cell to the adjacent cell. As the ions move from this cell to this cell, they rapidly move then to the other cell and so on by means of the gap junctions. This rapid movement of ions from cell to cell plays an important role in helping in the spread of action potential or electrical activity from one cell to the other. To summarize, gap junctions are junctions between cells or intercellular junctions that are present in the intercalated disc and these are channels that connect one cell to the adjacent cell, helping in the rapid movement of ions, thereby helping in the spread of electrical activity from one cell to the other. This helps in a coordinated contraction of the whole tissue. As the action potential spreads from cell to cell, the electrical activity spreads throughout the whole tissue at a time, helping in the whole cardiac muscle to contract as a single unit. This characteristic of the whole cardiac muscle functioning as a single unit has been described as a syncytium. Syncytium means a group of cells that function as a single unit. The, a group of cells, cyto means cells, sync together and function together as one single unit. This is possible in the cardiac muscles because of the presence of gap junctions that are present in the intercalated disc that help in the spread of action potential or electrical activity from one cell to the other rapidly enabling the whole muscle to function together as one single unit so uh, for any muscle for the muscle to contract there should be an electrical activity preceding it this can be uh, compared to that of uh, switching on a fan so uh, for the fan to run, you need to first plug it on. So when you on the switch of the fan, that is the electrical activity. And this electrical activity then leads to the mechanical activity, which is the fan's blades moving and causing the fan to run. Similarly, in our muscles, there should be one electrical activity that has to precede the mechanical activity, which is the contraction of the muscle. So the electrical activity is the action potential and mechanical activity is the contraction of the muscle. And in case of cardiac muscle cell, this electrical activity rapidly spreads from cell to cell by means of gap junction enabling the whole cardiac muscle to contract together at a time as a single unit to summarize syncytium where cyto means cell sync means sinking together is a term that means a group of cells that function as a single unit. The rapid communication between adjacent cells by means of gap junction enables the cardiac muscle to function as a single unit or a syncytium. The cardiac muscle is thus a syncytium of many heart muscle cells in which the cardiac muscle cells are so interconnected with one another that when one cell becomes excited, the action potential rapidly spreads to all of them. And this enables them to function together as a single contractile unit. 
the heart is actually composed of two syncytiums that is the atrial syncytium and the ventricular syncytium the atrial syncytium where the atrial cardiac muscle cells function together as a single unit and the ventricular syncytium where the ventricular cardiac muscle cells function together as one single unit between the atria and the ventricle there is a dense layer of fibrous connective tissue that is electrically non-conductive that is it does not allow the spread of electrical signals from the atria to the ventricle and this is beneficial in the pumping action of the heart as it ensures that the atria and the ventricle function as two separate units for example if in case the electrical activity were to spread from the atria to the ventricle then as the atria contracts the ventricle will also contract together and the whole heart will be contracting together as one unit which is not a good pumping activity instead the atria contracts first followed by the ventricle ensuring effective pumping of blood by the heart and this delay in the spread of electrical impulses from the atria to the ventricle is because of the presence of the fibrous tissue which doesn't allow the quick spread of impulses from the atria to the ventricle and also the presence of the atrioventricular node which is present between the atria and the ventricle and this atrioventricular node is responsible for transmitting the impulse from the atria to the ventricle with a slight delay so if the impulses were to pass quickly from the atria to the ventricle through this in through this gap here then the impulses will be quickly passing from the atria to the ventricle leading to the whole muscle whole cardiac muscle contracting together but instead the impulses pass from the atria to the ventricle through the av node with a slight delay in the transmission of impulse this delay is because of the presence of less gap junction in the av node allowing slower conduction of impulse from the atria to the ventricle and because of this delay what happens is the atria contracts first followed by the ventricle this is very beneficial in the pumping action of the heart because the atria contracts first pushing the blood from the atrium to the ventricle and at this time the ventricle doesn't contract so it has enough time to relax and get filled with blood after which the atrium stops contracting and by that time the impulse from the ventricle must have uh, sorry the atria would have reached the ventricle allowing the ventricle to contract thereby pumping blood from the ventricle to the pulmonary or the systemic circulation depending on which side of the ventricle is pumping and this ensures that there is effective pumping of blood to various tissues in the body so the atria contracts first pushing blood to the ventricle and at that time the ventricle is relaxed enabling it to get filled with the blood and then the ventricle contracts pumping blood to the systemic circulation and the pulmonary circulation so to summarize what we just learned the atria are separated from the ventricles by means of a fibrous tissue that surrounds the atrioventricular valvular openings between the atria and the ventricles normally the electrical potentials are not conducted from the atria to the ventricle through this tissue 
instead the electrical potentials are conducted only through a specialized conductive system called as the av bundle and the impulses are conducted from the atrium to the ventricle with a delay and this delay in the conduction of impulses and the presence of a fibrous tissue that prevents the direct transmission of impulses allows the muscles of the heart to function as two separate functional syncytium that ensures that the atria contract first followed by the ventricle and this ensures effective pumping of the blood by the heart. Another important intercellular junction between the cardiac muscles are desmosomes derived from the Greek terms desmo meaning bond, soma meaning body and desmosomes are adhesive protein complexes that help bond or connect Two adjacent cells together helping to maintain the mechanical integrity of the tissues. So the cardiac muscle consists of many individual cardiac muscle cells or muscle fibers which are arranged in series and in parallel with one another. Just like any other cell, they have a cell membrane known as the sarcolemma and there are many other organelles within the cell which are specialized to the cardiac muscle cell. And each cardiac muscle cell has one nucleus in the center which is centrally placed. And also when you look at the cardiac muscle through electron microscopy, you can see striations which are because of the arrangement of the sarcomeres within the cell. And the intercalated discs are parts of the cell membrane that help separate one cell from the other. And these discs have junctions or intercellular junctions known as the gap junctions and the desmosomes. And there is this interesting fact about the arrangement of the cardiac muscle cells. And like if you see in the ventricle, you know that the ventricles help pump blood upward from the ventricle to the great vessels. And this is possible because of the spiral arrangement of the ventricular muscle. So the ventricular muscles are arranged in such a way that when the ventricles contract, they pump blood in an upward direction. thus ensuring that the ventricles pump the blood upward through the iota from the left ventricle to the iota and from the right ventricle to the pulmonary trunk upwards. The cardiac muscle cell is involuntary. It exhibits autorhythmicity, meaning it can generate its own impulses without the need for external innovation. So even if you cut out all the nerve supply to the cardiac muscle, it will still be able to generate its own impulses. And apart from that, it also has a nervous innervation controlled by the autonomic nervous system, which helps modulate the cardiac activity depending on the external factors. The four main properties of cardiac muscles are rhythmicity or automaticity, excitability, contractility, and conductivity, which are also termed as chronotropism, bathmotropism, inotropism, and dromotropism. Here, the term tropic means having an affinity towards something. That's the meaning of tropism in medical terms, that is having an affinity towards something. Chronotropism means something related to time. 
there is rhythmicity related to time that is rhythmicity is a term that means something that occurs in regular time intervals and this occurs automatically without any external stimulation in case of cardiac muscles so rhythmicity is also known as automaticity and this occurs in regular intervals that is regular time intervals so this is also known as chronotropism and excitability is also termed bathmotropism. Bathmo means uh, having an affinity towards excitability. Bathmotropism is having an affinity towards excitability. And contractility is also termed inotropism. Inotropism is having an affinity towards the action of contraction. Conductivity is also known as bromotropism that is having an affinity towards conduction of impulses throughout the tissue. Automaticity is the ability of the cardiac muscles to generate spontaneous electrical activity without any external stimulation. Case of every other cell in the body there needs to be an external stimulation from the nervous system in order to generate the electrical activity in the cell. But in the cardiac muscle, the cardiac muscle cells can generate their own impulses without the need of electrical stimulation. That property of the cardiac muscle cell is known as automaticity. And this generation of impulses occurs in a rhythmic manner which is known as rhythmicity which is the spontaneous production of electrical impulses in the cardiac muscle cell that occurs in a rhythmic manner which is that it occurs in regular intervals a rhythm means something that occurs in regular intervals so the generation of the electrical impulses occurs in the cardiac muscle in regular intervals in repetitive and a stable manner which is known as rhythmicity so cardiac muscles exhibit the property of autorhythmicity and this is made possible because of the presence of pacemaker cells which are the cells in the cardiac muscle that generate its own impulses and that is responsible for the property of autorhythmicity. The property of excitability of the cardiac muscle means that the cardiac muscle is able to respond to adequate stimuli by generating an action potential. So uh, the cardiac muscle cells have the uh, ability to generate their own impulses and when this impulse reaches a certain threshold level, it becomes an adequate stimuli which is able to generate an action potential. The ability of the cardiac muscle to respond to this adequate stimuli by generating an action potential is known as the excitability of the cardiac muscle. Contractility is the ability of the cardiac muscle to convert this electrical energy, that is the action potential, into mechanical work in the form of contraction of the muscle. Conductivity is the ability of the cardiac muscle fibers to conduct the cardiac impulses that are initiated in the SA node which is the primary pacemaker of the heart. And the cardiac impulses are conducted through a specialized conducting system from the SA node to the AV node to the bundle of His and the Purkinje fibers. This helps in the spread of electrical activity to the adjacent tissues, enabling the contraction of the heart. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, please subscribe to my channel so that you can get updates whenever I post a new video.
and I would love your feedback in the comments below. Please also let me know if you have any further questions or any topics that you would like me to cover in the future videos. I'd be happy to assist you with that. And uh, until then, happy learning. See you.